Have you ever wondered why many fruits like bananas, apples, potatoes change rapidly its color and turn to brown when cut or exposed to air? By the end of this video, we'll give some tips from the experts on how to prevent or slow down the browning of your fruits. We will find out here in our episode on Food Science and Us. Welcome to my YouTube channel with a science-based explanations from the experts. We will debunk myths about food so you'll have an informed decision in making food choices that is free from guilt and fear. So let's talk about science behind your food. Let's get started! Foods are made of lots of different molecules including called enzymes. Enzymes are special proteins which can be speed up chemical reactions and act as biological catalysts. They can cause fruit to ripen and over ripen, which gives the fruit a brown color. Fresh fruit and vegetables normally keep enzymes trapped in their tissues. However, when the fruit is sliced or squashed, or when the fruit or vegetable begins to break down with age, the enzymes come out into contact with oxygen in the air. This causes the fruit to turn brown. Oxygen in the air can cause sliced fruits to brown, a process called enzymatic browning, an oxidation reaction. Phenols and the enzymes phenolase are found in the cells of the apple. And when these are exposed to oxygen in the air, for example, through slicing, the oxygen causes reaction. The penalase changes the penals into melanin, which has brown color. To stop the oxidation reaction, the penalase enzymes need to be denatured. This could be done by using heat and acids. You may heard of melanin before. Melanin is a pigment that gives human hair, skin, and eyes and their colors. The process of browning is one of the chemical reactions that take place in food chemistry and represents an interesting research regarding topic, a topic regarding health, nutrition, and food technology. Polyphenols are called phenolic compounds are a group of chemical substances present in plants like fruits and vegetables, which play an important role during enzymatic browning because they are a substrate for the browning enzymes. Enzymatic browning causes a lot of food waste, but it can also be useful. We would not have a tea or chocolate without it. Enzymatic browning give us color, you know, in our mouth watering, chocolates, coffee, for tea lovers. So what we can do now to prevent the enzymatic browning of fruits or vegetables for salads, for example? Here are the practical tips that we can do to prevent that enzymatic browning. First rule, do not damage. When the product is not damaged, browning won't occur. As long as the cell are whole, the enzyme, penols, and oxygens are separated from one another, and as such, they can't react. It only when cells are damaged, they can find one another and react, turning the product brown. So as long as you don't slice, peel, cut, or otherwise damage the product, the produce, browning won't happen. In order for steps one and two to happen, the presence of oxygen is crucial. As such, if you store the product in the environment without any enzymatic um, reaction or that reaction won't happen. Since oxygen is part of the air that surrounds us, that isn't easy. If you have a straight surface, you can place the product onto a flat surface to reduce the amount of oxygen coming in. Alternatively, 
you can sum submerge it in water. Water replaces air and so keeps the oxygen away. Manufacturers may use packaging technologies to prevent oxygen from coming into contact with their freshly cut produce using vacuum packing. For instance, um, they also inject a package with nitrogen to take out most of the oxygen. However, since produce will spoil more quickly when there's no oxygen at all, it's a delicate balance of keeping the produce alive versus maintaining its color. You can also try to remove the water. In order for the reaction to take place, all molecules need to be able to move around to find each other. By removing water, so drying your food, this can become a lot harder and browning can be slowed down. Keep in mind, though the product needs to be very dry for this to work. As a matter of fact, the reaction might even speed up when only some water is removed since the remaining liquid will only be more concentrated. How about this one? Change the pH or the acidity. The first factor that can influence this configuration is the pH value of its environment. The question now is what is pH value? By the way, it's only a measure for the acidity or alkalinity of a liquid. A low value of less than 7 indicates an acidic environment. A high value more than 7 indicates an alkaline environment. Different types of enzymes prefer environments with different pH value, their so-called optimum value. This may depend on the pH value of the product the enzyme is a part of. Most don't perform well at very low pH value less than 4. Though um, this is why apple pie recipes often call for squeezing some lemon juice on freshly cut apples. The lemon juice is quite acidic and lowers the pH value. As a result, it can slow down or stop browning. You can also try to lower the temperature. Enzymes don't just have an optimum pH value at which they work fastest. They also have an optimum temperature at which it catalyzes fastest. The optimum temperature for phenols varies widely for different types of produce. For cucumbers, it might be a lot higher, higher than for apples, for instance. Generally speaking, though, storing produce at a lower temperature, for example, in the fridge, slows down enzymatic browning. Keep in mind, though, that you might be causing other unintended side effects, since not all types of produce can actually withstand low temperatures. Stay clear of freezing as well. Freezing will damage cells and most fresh produce will change because of freezing. Also, even at freezing, enzymatic browning can still occur. It just, it's slowly. It's got me. I'll tell you a secret. The reason of a golden or yellow raisins haven't turned brown. This is because of the addition of this ingredient, sulfur dioxide. It's not yet completely understood how it works, but it's clear the addition of this ingredient can completely prevent enzymatic browning. Lastly, but not least, you can also add another ingredient that interferes with a chemical reaction. The second step of enzymatic browning is an oxidation reaction. By adding an antioxidant, you can reverse this step. The way quinones can react to those colored molecules. A commonly used example of this ascorbic acid or the vitamin C. An additional advantage of the acid is that it also lowers the pH value, acting on the browning system in two ways. That should give you plenty of tools on how to slow down or prevent enzymatic browning from occurring. Let us know in the comments on what you're planning to use. Please do like and subscribe my YouTube channel and share for this video. And see you next time.
Have a great day. Thank you. And so with that, if you have any questions, write in your comment section and we will try to answer that as, uh, as soon as I can. And see you on my next video. Thank you. Please do like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Have a great day. See you on my next video. Thank you.